Allow me to reintroduce myself. My name is Ho, oh, oh, H to the O-V. I used to move snowflakes by the O-Z. I guess even back then you can call me CEO of the R-O-C. Ho, oh, fresh out the frying pan into the fire. I be the music biz number one supplier. Flyer than a piece of paper bearing my name. Got the hottest chick in the game wearing my chain. That's right, Ho, oh, oh, Ho. Not D-O-C, but similar to them letters. No one could do it better. I check chatter like a food inspector. My homie Strick told me, dude, finish your breakfast. So that's what I'ma do. Take you back to the dude with the Lexus. Fast forward the jewels and the necklace. Let me tell you dudes what I do to protect this. Shoot at you actors like movie directors. <laughs> Say the movie, dogs. Now, before I finish, let me just say, I did not come here to show out. I did not come here to impress you. Because to tell you the truth, when I leave here, I'm gone. And I don't care what you think about me. But just remember, when it hits the fan, brother, whether it's next year, 10 years, 20 years from now, you'll never be able to say that these brothers lied to you, Jack. Please, Carol, let him come out. Come on. He can't come out until he resembles the man that I marry. Carol, we don't have Carol. that kind of time. <laughs> yes. What up? So, uh, welcome to the Frankie Mink Show. Just getting back from Houston. Look, you see my shirt? Have you seen the shirt? What's it say? I don't know. Crystal Ray Jesuits. It's uh I spoke at the school in Houston this week, uh Catholic school, high school. Um one hundred percent of their seniors are going to college this year. And I went and spoke there. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Isn't the new Pope a Jesuit? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I think so. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, Jesuit. What, what is a Jesuit though? I don't even really know. They were like a certain sect that spun off, not really spun off, but a, a group of uh, Christians or Catholics that uh, I don't know. They they, they uh, kind of like had their own tribe, for lack of a better term. But they're cat. They got to be Catholic. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. So anyway, I spoke there. I was in I was in uh, Houston all week. Uh, I got to do five, four or five speeches down there, or talks, and uh, today I ended one with, oh, I got to pull out the shirt. Hold on one second. Look at this cool shirt I got today. This was another school I spoke at, and they have a group of students, and it's kind of a tough school, so if they're watching tonight, I want to show the shirt they gave me. Hastings, huh? Hastings, that's it. Hastings. This is in Houston. Houston. It was a tough school, like a tough, tough in a tough neighborhood, real diverse school, kind of. But uh, great crowd. Oh, such a, we had so much fun just laughing. And um, I got to use this one line I love to use where this one girl kept asking me, she asked me two or three questions. And um, kind of just a little wild girl. She, you can tell she's kind of a little bit wild. So I'm talking. What do you mean? Like, I don't know. Like, I could just tell she's kind of up in the mix and maybe she was just kind of loud, yeah. kind of a loud girl. So she asked me the last question of the the, the talk, and I, I said, you know, I want to bring up one point before I get out of here. I said, uh, women, I said, you know, girls, one thing I know about girls is this. You know, hood rat girls are girls that are always demanding attention. That's why they're always getting bullies to fight over, always up in everyone's gossip. They always want attention, demanding attention. I said, but a woman demands respect, and that's the difference. And the whole crowd was like, oh, because I knew I was kind of yeah, too yeah, tired. Yeah. But I meant it in a nice way, and she got it. She was laughing about it. It was fun. So that's why I did that. Did you just burp? I did just burp. I had, it's all this coffee. Let's talk about the coffee real quick. <laughs> Let's talk about the coffee situation. Set the so, scene. Well, well first I got to introduce uh, my, it's my brother-in-law, Evan Jones, right here. Thank you. Yeah. We don't even have a name tag for you. Usually okay. it comes up at the bottom and says Evan Jones. But So my brother-in-law, married to... Uh, Married to his sister, his oldest sister's only sister. That's right. And before we get into the coffee, I want to remind people before you try and slam me on this coffee situation, you still don't give me credit for introducing you and your wife. I, yeah, you're right. Thank you. For the longest time, you're like, no, it was Gigi, yeah. it was this, it was, yeah, yeah, and yeah. it was not. It was me you playing did play hockey. You a major role in that. I made, the whole role. Yeah. How I wasn't even the best man at your wedding. He's the one that set up the blind date. Show you what a jerk I am. I remember pulling up to the house. I didn't have my license or a car at the time. Hey, they got your name on there. There you oh, go. Oh, nice. There you go. And I, uh, I, 
I identified all the cars out in the street and I saw this one like old minivan and I thought, oh man, I can't be dating a girl that drives a minivan. <laughs> Here I am. No car, no license. <laughs> Anyways, let's talk about the coffee. You called right. me about what, 45 minutes ago? For, yep. I said, I need a news guy. I said, none of my news people can make it in. Will you be my standing? Because I thought I wanted to bring you onto the show anyway and You'd become one that. of the characters. So it wasn't just out of the blue. I said, come on the show. Yeah, you're right. But I did call How you How many late. people did you call before me? Uh, one other person. One other person. Okay. So, and actually, I just texted them and said, hey, will you be available? Because it was so late notice, I didn't want to just call and ask you. You're a busy guy. So... So, yeah, I call you and I say, hey, why don't you come on my show? You be my news guy. And, and you said, all right. No, I didn't. I said, I'm working on my garage door, <laughs> hence my clothing. <laughs> my wife thinks it's fixed and it's operable right now, and it's not. She's going to go home and it's going to fall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't don't gonna... use the garage door. <laughs> Anyways, you say, you know, I'm going to Dunkin' Donuts. Mm -hmm. I said, give me a coffee. Absolutely. So you come to let me in down at the block. And here's what we got. Let me see. Let me see. I mean, what the hell's that all about? So I got, because I didn't know you wanted a big coffee. Come on. I mean, you know, it's late. I know you, you go to bed early. You don't want to just drink a big coffee like I do. You can't, okay. you can't hang with me. I can admit that you helped hook me up with my wife. You can't yeah. admit you, you dropped the ball on this one. This is what I'm going to do. The bowl, put it back on me. All right. Look at this. Watch out for the equipment. This is hi-fi stuff here. Here. It's a little shot right there for you. What's in it? Espresso. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so um, back to my Houston trip. Um, fun trip. Uh, we had. Uh, I heard you guys had snow while I was going though, so I want to bring no, that. We up. didn't get any snow. You got no snow. Yeah, maybe it, like a sleet or. But we had big thunderstorms, rain. Yeah, all that stuff. But yeah. while I was while I was down there, you know, everyone is in. Uh, I think it was Austin. You know, Austin was on the target for North Korea. Out of all yeah. the cities, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. so everyone was like, well, Texas probably told them because, like, Texans hate Austin because it's, like, the alternative city. It's kind of, like, the hip, uh, liberal city of all of Texas. Okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's, yeah. like, super liberal, and it's kind of like the Portland. It's kind of like the Des Moines. It's uh, just super liberal, kind of hip. Yeah. And um, so that was kind of funny. And um, so where, yeah. where are the uh, ghetto boys from? Was that, were they from Houston? They might have been a lot of a lot of hit like that hard like down south hip hop come from Houston. It's kind of like the so you were in both Austin and Houston. No, just Houston, but everyone talked about the Austin thing. Oh, I got you. Yeah, it was in their propaganda map. In the yes, background. yes, yes, yes. Like out of all cities, so yeah, that was right. kind of funny. Everyone was talking about that. So, um, yeah, no, no I just got home. Uh, yeah, see these pants. Let me show you these pants. Oh, come on, how far are we gonna go with look, this clothing? Look at these pants. <laughs> these pants cost me two hundred dollars. What are you kidding me? I swear to God, two hundred dollars. The only closest place to my hotel was Nordstrom's, and I'm not giving Nordstrom a plug or anything because they, I went there to go buy a nice pair of jeans because I had to go on stage like within like an hour. Yeah. No, no, it was blowing it out of proportion. Probably four hours. So I go in. And I said, I got to buy a nice pair of jeans. So this woman's all helping me, and now that, and she's kind of cute, you know what I mean? So cute older woman so she's kind of helping me and she shows me these jeans and i really like them like i put them on they feel so nice you know and i think just whoosh. and so i didn't even look at the price not thinking it was going to be that expensive so then she starts doing alterations because i had to tighten yeah. them up a little bit on me and uh as we're doing it and she's doing all and we're just talking and blah 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 what do you do and i'm telling her what i do for a living and then I say, all right, I'll take them. And I didn't look at the price because I didn't think they were going to be yeah. $200. $200. $205 what they were. Wow. Is that tax deductible? I, mean, I don't know. I mean, I was working and it was first stage. Uniform. It's a uniform. Thank you. The boat, is it? Yep. I think that would be uh, counted as a tax deduction as a uniform. Oh, wait. When we have oh, ghetto boys, we're from Houston. I got to keep looking at this thing here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Fifth yeah, Ward. Yeah. I remember they always saying Fifth Ward in there, right? Yeah. Who who wonder who RML is on our chat room? Who is that? That might be my boy Ryan Lehrman. Oh, because he says Evan from Phoenix. It's Ryan. Yeah, there yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's crazy. <laughs> uh, so, so anyway, I bought these four hundred hour pants, two hundred hour pants, and uh, well, you yeah. didn't look for the clearance rack or no? I just went in. You know, I was just being a baller. I was just being a baller. 
All of them. Well, and I was just like, oh, I'll take he, those, you know, and two. Let me see them again. Yeah, they're good. I mean, look at these. Look at those. Look at this. That's good, right? Come on. They're nice. 200, yeah. 200 bucks. Those are my old boxers, I think. <laughs> those are. <laughs> No, they're not your old boxers. So tell me a little bit more about the school. You said 100% graduation rate. How many kids? Is it a big school? No, it's small. It's only like 500 people. And in the grad, and it's a small Catholic high school. Yeah. And uh, Like we're talking about inner city youth? Inner city. Total inner city. That but it's not private? It's a public school? Father Martinez was the, the head je je Jesuit. Yeah. And, uh, man, he was, so, he was so full of energy for the... Little Latino dude just was like, man, he, he was fun. Like, how old do you think he was? Um, oh man, maybe fifties. Passion though, huh? Oh yeah, all over the place. Super, like, made the whole school. The school was run down. They had all these pictures of the school when it was run down, and he went and they had it all fixed up so it looked like lofts almost. Like, it had the bare rip walls with the track lighting. You know, that really. This is nice... public funded or what? No, it's a Catholic school. Nice. Yeah. So yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent graduation. What would you say the mix is race wise? There's all Latino. Oh no, all there was a couple of black kids in there. I didn't see any white kids. I seen a couple of black kids in the talk, but like gangbangers. And... I don't, you know, I mean they're all dressed in uniform, so you can't tell. Which I, that's why yeah. I'm all for uniforms in school. You can't tell, you know. Yeah. They all had the same, I think, like blue shirts and and uh, it was um, another brick in the wall, though. That's like you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. How about a little? expression no it's school okay it just makes people stand out um what the heck was i just gonna say oh do you think they have like gang fights and people get arrested or fights you know in the school drug deals stuff like that or is it i don't think in that school they do i think like once you get into that school i think it's you you take it on gotcha because the whole i mean everyone was so respectful holding the doors and thank you and wow. you know super i mean just what's the blueprint you know Let's pass that out. Yeah, right. Let's get that to everybody. So whatever it was, it was it was amazing. And so um, so yeah, Houston and just thanks Houston for all my friends that are listening in Houston. I mean, everyone was uh, very nice, and everyone said they couldn't wait to listen to the show tonight. So you know, my 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 talks have become more comedy now. I don't know if you know that. I I'm, I don't know I'm, if I like that. I, no, it's good. It's good. It's um half lectures, half comedy now. And I like it. Like I make people laugh. I always did anyway, but now it's more funny. Like now I've, I've like written in jokes that work. They work. And then like how I, do you know they work? Because people laugh. It's the easiest judgment of all. People yeah. laugh at them. Is it that uncomfortable? No, it's like form? belly laughing. Really? People are laughing. And you incorporate the jokes in your story? Yeah. Okay. And it's you know what? It's so funny. It's people. What I what I'm doing is. I, I, I might have made a mistake like a couple years ago I would say something I made a mistake and it made everybody laugh yeah so then I started using it but then I had to write it in somehow like how am I going to make that still work consistently so and I do it every you know every couple of years if you heard me talk four or five years ago you're going to hear you know s some of the same base same meat and potatoes but there's a lot of little fringe stuff that I say now that uh, is funny and works yeah I'm good yeah but you know me, I'm always critical of you, but you are, you got the serious <laughs> points. Yeah, I hear him laughing. Oh. You got, like, you know, you, you know, there's times when you're trying to hit oh, home and yeah. be serious. Oh, totally. I mean, there's times where I'm, you know, when I talk about empathy, because that's my main goal, my main uh, talk anymore, I end it with empathy. Like, you have to, even for a guy with a swastik on his face, if you have empathy for him, mm -hmm. you might be able to change that guy. You know, Did if you have uh, empathy for your stepdad when he threw the ET lamp at you? No, I didn't then, but eventually. Did you tell you turn that into a joke? You know what I mean. I do. I turn that into a joke. See, I don't like that. No, because I have to because it's such a. He hard... ripped up your uh, season tickets to the lacrosse yeah, games. That was bad. You know, you know, it was funny. My first ever job I ever had, first ever real job I ever had, was working for HBO. I mean, it's funny now. I work in television, but. HBO, but I used to go around and hand out their flyers. So it wasn't really like a job for the, you know, I used to go and put the, uh, what's coming up on HBO this month in people's doors. Oh, okay. That was my first job. In South Philly. Uh, yeah, we used to do Southwest, South Philly, Southwest Philly, and North Philly, like tough neighborhoods, 
you know, I don't even know people at HBO there, but we had you would actually do it, or would you throw them in a dumpster? No, I do it actually. I was one of the kids that did. It. There were a couple of kids that just threw in a dumpster. Sure. I, I I liked getting it to everybody. I liked because the guy would after he pick us up in a van, which he was a shady dude anyway. He would drive down, and you could see like on my side of the street, you could see because you couldn't stick him in a mailbox. You had to stick him in the door. Did good work. I did good work. So, um, but my first big pay I ever got from them, it was you know. A hundred and something dollars, you know, and it was for like two or three weeks of doing that. And it was hours. And I'll never forget what I bought. I'll never, I bought an Italian hoagie, a Pepsi, and season tickets to the, to the Philadelphia lacrosse. And my stepfather came home and was drunk and was being a jerk to me. And he said, didn't you get paid today? And I said, yeah, I got paid. And, and I was so happy that I actually didn't like waste my money. Like I spent it on yeah. something I wanted. And so, uh. So I told him what I did. I said, you know, I bought uh, bought myself lunch, and I spent most of the rest of it on season tickets for the Philadelphia Cross, the Philadelphia Wings. And he started grabbing about it, blah, blah, blah. That night, I went to the first game, came home with my friends. I asked my mom. I said, Mom, can I say, can my two best friends, Damian and John, I said, can they sleep over? We just got back from the Cross game. She was out drinking down the street with some of her, some of her friends, like right on the same street as us. She said, sure, go ahead, you know. And uh, so I go to sleep. Me and my friends are just watching TV, talking about the Wings, whatever, fall asleep. My stepfather comes home in the middle of the night and remembered this. And I'm not, he beat the crap out of me in front of my friends and then grabbed the tickets. And first he slapped me in the face with them and then he ripped them up right in front of me. Yeah. I was like, you. And I forget, he made me clean that, made me go down in the middle of the night now because he was drunk. And he he uh, made my friends leave in the middle of the night, which they only lived like yeah. five houses down, whatever, not a big deal. But then he made me clean the basement all night. You're like, what, 13? Yeah, 13. About 13. But I mean, I was proud of myself. I did the right thing. I spent it on, I didn't go out in the toy store. You know what I mean? I bought something. I thought, oh, I'm going to use these every weekend. There were wings tickets. You couldn't tape them back together? You know what? I, I, don't, I don't think I did. I never, I don't think I ever won again. I, I, you know what? I don't, I think when he ripped them up, I don't, I don't even know where they went to. I think yeah. like he ripped them up and was like, ah. Anyway, that was my stepfather. Um, so, um, are yeah. you paying attention to your breaks? No. I still got, yeah, I, I know when. I How do you got, know when to take a break? We still got three minutes. How do you know that? Because I'm, I'm the guy who runs the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, DeBold will tell me when it's time to take a break. So DeBold, let me tell you, I, was, I tell people every week this. So I find out I'm going to get this show Yeah. about a month ago. I'm talking to a guy who runs this network, my boss here. He guy runs the, the shows and he's been begging me. Begging me to do the show. He's been, you, you got to get a show. You got to get a show. I'm always like, nah, nah, nah. I ain't got time. I ain't got time. So finally, I start thinking about it. I start seeing some other people do shows, and I'm like, man, I know I could do better. Right. I know that, you know, not that they're lame or anything, but I'm just like, I know I could do better than they, what they're doing. So he says, let's do it. So I was like, all right. And so we have to start making a plan. Like, who are you going to get on your show? What are you going to do? What's your format? Ba, 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 ba. And uh, I said, first thing I want is I want Chris DeBolt as my producer. And he goes, no, Chris, Chris, and this is from the boss. He goes, no, nah, Chris is kind of busy. He's a busy guy, and you might have to get, he has a, Chris has a whole bunch of guys under him who he can farm out to me if I need him, right? So he goes, just call Chris, set up some guys. He'll, he'll, why don't you work with some of the other guys until you start to like them, and maybe that'll work. I said, no, I said, I ain't doing it unless I get Chris. So I called Chris like early Sunday morning because I had his number somehow. I think on Facebook or something, I had his phone number. So I call him like Sunday morning. He doesn't answer. You know me, I'll stalk you. Yeah. So he doesn't answer, I think, like, 10 minutes later. 10 minutes later, because he didn't call me right back. And how dare you not call me back? God forbid. God forbid. This guy that owns $200 jeans. <laughs> so so I, call, I call him right back again. I was like, Chris, dude, I'm doing a show, and I won't do it unless you're my producer. And he was like, oh, he came. First, he tried to slip out a little bit. He just gave me a little, oh, well, you know. Well, you. And I said, no, Chris, it's you. Oh, you. I want you. You got to do it with me, at least for a while. And I said, well, well, I'll take this show somewhere. I'm going to get this show places. You you got to be with me. And uh, he said, all right, I'll do it. I'll do it. Just when he thought his career was headed up. <laughs> <laughs> no, he stuck with me. Um, but what's your history with him? Did you have him on when you were on FM? Or how do you know? How do you know his work? How do you know he's any good? Um, I knew Chris from from here. But then I also knew you from the TV show over at the... Uh, the good, the, yeah, the Good Morning Show. Yeah. So, and then we knew each other on Facebook, and like he would always like if we were battling like the Christian right people or just someone that's being goofy, mm -hmm. whatever. I would comment, 
and then I would see like Chris comment after me and it would be, you know, or he would comment on something. And I'd be like, ah, he's, you know, like he's one of them good guys you want on your side yeah, in the yeah, debate. Yeah. So I was like, all right. So, so I just knew him that way. And, and so you do the KCWI show? Used to, used to. Okay. Because <clears throat> I can remember time. watching that and thinking, man, who's doing the production? I just thought was a little sloppy on that. No offense. <laughs> Well, you, you know, know it, but I was watching it on a regular startup. TV, and I think it was shot in widescreen. You know, <laughs> yeah, and, that, that's uh, one of the complaints I've heard. Hey, Jackie, <laughs> she's all right, man. You like the Jackie <laughs> oh, shit? Yeah. <laughs> now, I I never knew that story. I'd like to know whatever happened with Heather. You probably can't let us in on that. I wonder yeah. if they like let her go. I don't know because I liked Heather too. She was a friend of mine. Yeah, I forget. And they fire. And I think they fire. I don't know if they let her go or if she just moved on. But I think it was a, a mutual departure. Am I correct? Very political there. Um, uh, am I correct that they used to have like a brick background and now they've changed it and they got a new desk and stuff? Are they throwing yeah, yeah. some money at the show? Yeah, yeah, constantly upgrading. Yeah, nice. Look at you. You're still loyal to the show. They're good people. Good people over there. He's backing them up. And didn't they fire you? No, no. Uh, no. You sure you don't want to start that rumor right now? No, no, no. It, it was a mutual. Uh, oh, walk see. Away. <laughs> mutual. <walk away. laughs> yeah. They said, you know what? You either resign right now or we fire you. No, no, no. I'm part of the family over there. Nice. All right. Well, you're listening to the Frank Mink Show. We might have a guest on after. We're trying to figure that all out, but uh, stay tuned. We have uh, news coming up. Frank Mink Show, the Frankie Mink Show. I keep forgetting to even say my. It's the Frankie Mink Show on webcastonelive.com. We'll be right back. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. I'm just saying. 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 Ching, ching. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Good, e- Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. How's everybody doing tonight? All right. I'd like to welcome All to the right. stage the uh, lyrically acclaimed. Woo. Woo. I like this young man because when he came out, he came out with the phrase. He went from ashy to classic. All right. I like that. All right. So everybody in the house, give a warm. Round of applause for the notorious B.I.G. Ha, the notorious B.I.G., ladies and gentlemen. Give it up for him, y'all. Oh. Welcome back. The Frankie Mink Show. Webcast Live 1. No. Webcast 1 Live.com. I'm going to get it. Every show I mess that up. Dot com. Mm-hmm. So I want to have some call-ins because I don't know if, I don't know if our guest is going to make it. I think we might have had a little contract dispute or uh who was it that fan he's the comedian who won uh last comic standing the tv show 
He's a good friend of mine, and so we've been trying to get him on the show, and, and he wants to be on it, I think. Debo, can you fill us in just a little bit? Um, I think we are going to have him on next week. I think that's what's going to come down to. Next week? Yeah. So I don't want to tune in to listen to him come back next week. Stay here for now. No, stay here. Stay here, but come back How next week. How do those phone calls go down? Does he call the show and say, hey, I can't make it, I'm running late? I mean, what happens? How's that go down? I think, uh, his manager, right? Yeah. yeah, you're dealing with his manager. Yeah, I think he's uh, doing two shows um, in Portland. Do you think he's doing a double header tonight? So he sold out. I seen something about him sold out. Yeah. So I want people to call in today. We're going to yeah. talk about some stuff. So the number for our you call in here is one eight five five two four four zero zero seven seven. Again, this is the Frank Mink show. Let's put Chris DeBolt to work. I mean, the dude really does nothing back there, if you noticed, right? He doesn't do anything. I mean, he's got a lot of buttons back there. They just beep at him and he just looks at him. So call in, get some people to call. <laughs> look at <him>. Nothing. <laughs> Last time I was sitting in there looking at Facebook. So, um, so I want to talk about something I get on a lot, and that's gay marriage, real quick. Let's talk about this because I'm, mm-hmm. I, it's a touchy subject. What, what, how do you feel about it, honestly? It, it doesn't affect me, I don't think. Uh, are you conservative? You're, I, sometimes I, you're sometimes conservative. Sometimes I don't know. I mean, how do you... I don't know if I'm conservative or liberal. I don't know. I guess, how do you judge that based on the people you hang out with? I mean, you know what I mean? Well, the sad thing is the two things that always seem to be thrown up for people that are political is if you're uh, pro-choice and for gay marriage or liberal. Like, that's the two things anymore that are just like the biggest fights between everybody, Right. And then, okay. so that's, that's the, you know, and then it's, the, um, you know, then it gets into the fiscal conservative, which I, I kind of agree with some of the stuff, you yeah. know, too much spending, but, I and, and you're, a, and you, your other job, if uh, you don't have to say where, but you're a barber. So you right. hear, you hear the old white guys, you know, cause you don't cut too many other people, but white people's hair, right? Old white we're, guys. We're a diverse shop, Frank. Right. Our door's open to everybody. <laughs> but you hear, don't, you. Don't do that. <laughs> don't, go, don't go there. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. We got, we have a lot of, uh conservative uh, old-timers. And that's a place that they talk about things, right? Absolutely. The barbershop. Yep. So that's one of the good bonuses I'm going to have for you coming on here sometime. Is that you... Oh, my God. Where's the coffee you bought me? <laughs> so what do, you, what do you hear in the barbershop? If you can if you can say, you ain't got to say nobody's name, but what do you hear? Are you against well, gay marriage? Hold on a second here. I want to get back to what I am first. Oh, yeah. Like, I believe... I definitely believe in pro-choice, but, man, you see the pictures... Of those aborted babies, and they have a heartbeat, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a living deal right there. You know, it, it, is it, that right to say? Oh, I made a mistake. Let's, you know. I, I mean, can't how, how this. early? I mean, you think right away though? You think it is like even even when it's just like that little zygote? Yeah, it's stuck no, to the mother's no, but uterus or wherever it's sticking to. What the hell's it sticking to in there? You know, if you read the details about what they do. And then they got to examine what came out and look at, there's little pieces of bone. And yeah. It's like one of the pink baby birds, you see. You know, they come out of the nest sometimes. I know, but I mean, this is. So anyway, I don't know where I stand on that, but I definitely think a woman should have a right. But I mean, yeah. Okay. So you're undecided. Yeah. As far as gay marriage, I'm, I'm all for it, man. I mean, it, it doesn't affect my life in any way. Uh, I don't think. You know how it does affect? I know people that are gay that would want to be married to their partner, so I think they should be able to be married to their partner. Yeah. It makes and, them happy. And and just today I heard somebody talking about... We have a caller? Hold on here. All right. So um, just today I was talking with someone who brought up the excuse of, well, then what's next? Do we marry our pets? And I, it's the most... That's the most stupidest argument. And I usually won't say someone's argument stupid, but mm-hmm. well, what, what, can we marry our pets next? Or how many people can we marry five or six people then? Can a guy marry five or six women then? You know what? I, you know what? If that's really what those five or six people want to do, have at it. I don't care. I'm not, I'm not anti polygamy. Yeah. Who cares? If it makes them happy, I don't really care. But the, the, to bring it up as an animal or to bring it up as, you know, especially like the gay pedophile thing, which is a ridiculous argument in itself. I mean, it's two consenting adults who love one another. 
and I and I talked about this on uh, Facebook and on a blog where you know we how could we take away that moment that every human being gets to have where they look at the person that they love and think I want to spend the rest of my life with that person and I want to have a party and a wedding and celebrate it, mm -hmm. you know, and then you know I just think it's crazy. So you're all for it, right? Yeah, I am. I, um, I, I'm proud of Iowa. That's one of the things I've always been proud about Iowa. Second state to do it. Really? Second state to say, well, you know what? It's the, the freedom for anyone to do what they want. Yeah, I once heard an, uh, a lawyer or attorney say, I'm all for it. We'll let them uh, have to file for divorces too and I'll make money off that. Um, oh, we got a call. Let's get a call in. Let's see what we got here. All right. All right. Who we got? Sam? Is it Samuel? All right, we're going to get him coming on. Samuel. How's it going? Hey, you there? Yeah, I uh, just wanted to call in and uh, give you a shout-out, man. Uh, I heard you uh, probably close to 10 years ago back in uh, Sarasota, Florida, when I was uh, in middle school, and uh, ended up uh, looking you up online and follow a lot of your stuff the last uh, year and a half, two years, and just want to say we're proud of you, and uh, you know our family supports you, and I talk to you about people a lot of time, and... Uh, all this stuff you've been through, and it's, it's changed some lives, man. Sometimes there's people out there, you might not ever meet them, but, uh, you know, you're a big influence, man. So we just wanted to call in and say thanks. Hey, man, thank you. Thanks for calling in. So you're you're from down south? Yeah, I live in Greenville, South Carolina, but I lived in Florida for about six years before I moved back up here. What was the difference between Florida and, and uh, South Carolina? Uh, manners. And southern hospitality up here is crazy. <laughs> Uh, when I first moved back up here, I went to go visit a friend, and he ended up moving to a different house. But uh, the people there at the house were like, yeah, we bought the house from but hey, you want to come on in and eat some leftovers? You're more than welcome to. And I never met these people in my life. So I love the hospitality here. Nice. Well, man, thanks th thanks for calling in. And uh, anything you want to talk about? Let's get, let's get to you, Samuel. Let's get to you. What do you What do you want to talk about? What, what's, um, what's a topic you, you, you've talked about in the last couple of days that – it was a hot button topic with someone. Really, the the gun laws that's that's going into effect and stuff, and the things that's going on with the court. That's probably been my biggest thing this past couple months. Now, are you uh, for are you for gun legislation? Or are you are you you know complete Second Amendment? What what what? what I'm complete Second Amendment. Uh, it's you know a lot of these places where they have open carry and stuff. It just shows crime rates going down. You know, I don't think like you know a pedophile or like. You know, a rapist or something should be walking in with a gun, but uh, you know, there's there's people that, um, you know, have guns and you know, there there's always going to be people doing bad things, but you know, a weapon's a weapon at the end of the day, and I'm I'm completely for you know open carry and you know as far as the registration thing, I don't I don't really have an opinion on that to be honest with you. So you mean like the uh, everyone should register their gun and you know you know you have to fill out a background? Yeah, what do you feel? Does Expanded. that mean the back? Yeah, the background check for everybody. You think that's that's okay? Um, it, if they're, I guess you would say if they're, you know, like a, a like a violent and violent offender, maybe, um, I would support it, but I'm kind of either way on that as far as that goes. I think it does good, um, you know, to do that. Uh, I would, I would definitely agree. Um, so I'm not really for it or against it. Uh, I would, I would just think it would help if it was, you know, if you're selling the gun to somebody you shouldn't be selling it to. Yeah. Um, because then, and then a private sale, you can just go sell to a uh, you know a gangbanger or felon, right? I mean, if I you know that's so I think they, so uh, yeah, I'm all for the the background. Do, do checks guns right? like have titles like a car? You know? Yeah. <laughs> like, what do you mean? Like, there's a like you know you bought this from this seller and it st sticks. Oh, uh, you know, I don't know. Like adult, like you buy a pretty like a, like a car. You yeah, know, you yeah. Buy a car from somebody. I don't think so. You don't have papers for a gun, do you, Samuel? Uh, I've got a well. I bought a shotgun uh, not too long ago, and they gave they gave me an actual like registration for it. I don't even have it anymore. I gave it to my brother uh, for a present, but uh, um, I think they do that just to make sure you know it's um, it's legitimately yours. But then again, they can still check the serial numbers. I think the only time you would need one is if they were scratched off, just to you know prove that you own the weapon. But even then, again, you know weapons can easily be switched, but. You know, like I said, I'm 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 for it if it if it somebody needs to be checked and you know if it if it can help then I'm then I'm for it. But uh, I'm yeah. just I'm really just a strong supporter of the Second Amendment and I think that's you know that's one of the things that can keep a nation and keep people safe. You know. Um. 
switching gears, getting back to when you were in middle school, do you remember like after Frank spoke where some of the kids like, oh, that guy's just full, full of crap? Or like, no, no, no. It was literally the talk. People talked about it for like two or three weeks because it was like the teachers didn't tell us who we were going to see. All they said is like, we're going to, uh, we're about to hear about a guy, you know, and they mentioned the American History X thing and talked about, you know, anti racism. So we just expected it to be one of them boring you know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. speakers. And everybody was like, oh my God, who is this guy? That guy's crazy. <laughs> and uh, it was, it was fun, man. It was, I just, I never forgot it. And uh, I just thought about it like maybe two, two and a half years ago. And I uh, looked Frank up online. I was like, oh, that's him. I remember this guy. And uh, it was just, it was crazy, though. It was the talk of the town. Nice, nice. And well, people still remember it. I've talked to people. I'm like, hey, you remember this guy? And I checked his, checked his page out. And they're like, yeah, that guy, that guy was cool. So he was he was the only person that we ever like as a school went to go hear speak to. Actually paid attention to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, thank you so much for calling, and you know, call us anytime on this show. Really, I, I really like to hear your input. You know, um, thanks for being honest and and telling us what you feel about the Second Amendment. I love it. <laughs> Cool, man. Take care. See you, brother. That's uh, one of the things that impressed upon me. I went with you out to San Francisco, and you went to a school, which I thought was pretty pretty rough. Anyways, um, I think afterwards, some of the teachers came up to you and said, that's one of the only uh, speakers we had where the kids actually sat still and listened, <laughs> and they were engaged in what you were saying. You know what I mean? So yeah. Attention. And I get that a lot of Jewish, like when I do juvenile halls, because yeah. they like have extra guards because they're like, this is when all the kids are together and they start to act well, up. That's when I used to act up. Yeah. Right. At ju in Juvie Hall? No. Um. <laughs> Linglestown Junior High. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah. So that was cool. You know, on that gun registration thing, I mean, look, I, it, it's part of the fabric of America, I know, but I, I'm kind of a. I don't know if I want to say I'm a gun control guy, but I don't know, man. I just don't. They 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 worry me that so many people do have them, you know. And and but yeah. I don't want to tread on someone else's rights because of my fear. Like I don't want to be based on fear. That's basically I'd be yeah, it's judging. BS. Yeah. No, I'm I'm for the expanded background checks. You know, making sure some. Um, that reminded me. What's the deal? Like, if you're a convicted felon, mm -hmm. can you not vote for the president? I can. Some people can't. I can. Oh, so it's not black and white. Um, no, because I changed states, and when I went, went from one state to the other, they mixed up the paperwork. Yeah, and, and I mean, really, I mean, and I was meant to Pennsylvania, and when I went to Pennsylvania, they they sent me a paper right after I got off parole. Said you're off parole, you're off paper, um, you 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 have these rights back, and these rights you don't have. One of them was, you know, you'll never you'll never be able to touch a gun ever again in your so life. So you can't own a gun. No, no, no I'm not. A, no. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Does that bother you? you? Can't own one. Yes. Would you like to own one? Absolutely. Well, you were just saying you're I, one of the nut. No, like, no, I want one for you know. I just want one for home protection, you know. And and I think you know. I think there's ways. You know, if you get certain guns, if you get like a muzzle loader or whatever yeah. they're called, I can get one of those. And you know, that's a good option for for us. You know, because yeah, don't get a muzzle. Yeah, I mean, you get one shot. Yeah. You better make it count. <laughs> All right, before we get going, oh my, I got my buddy Sammy Wrangle on. Um, he oh, he's my, the guy that was on the my first, first guest. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's always got something to say. Yeah. Uh, well, you better take his call. Yeah, let's pretty, let's put him on. Bigger than you. <laughs> is this Sammy? This is Sammy. You didn't you get enough airtime two weeks ago on here, man? What's going on? Well, I saw that nobody was calling in. I felt some pity for you. I wanted to make sure somebody got online. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. You you yes, you're making you made the show. So what do, you, what, do you, what do you got going on? Where, where are you at in, in the world? See, now Sammy's a speaker, too. He travels like no, no, I no. do. I heard Sammy say he was going for, like, his master's or his doctor. I was like, whoa. Yeah. This guy's, this guy's no... Yeah, I'm heading, for my, I'm heading for my doctorate out of Adler School right now. Wow. Adler, is that, a, is that an online school? No. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's some stuff you need to be doing. <laughs> Learn how to talk. <laughs> Hey man, I do have broken English, but you know I destroyed the English language. But it's just the way I am, and you know what you get. That's that Philly I, stuff. Man. I, I get to the point. See all you all you fancy educated people. You always take so long getting to the point. Just say what you got to say. <laughs> See, you're always Sam. You're one. Of, you're always trying to be politically correct, man. And I'm, I'm all, that's why I'm always there for you to make sure I correct <laughs> that in you. That you you need to stop. You need to come correct. Hey, dude, you're the one talking about spooning. <laughs> 
Sammy, what, what do you got going on right now? I mean, let's, let's, what's your hot topic? Give me a hot topic you're working on. We got a couple minutes before our break. Uh, well, you know, one of the things we're working, obviously, you know, man, something me and you are really invested in is violent extremism, you know, and it's surrounded with this gun issue. It's surrounded with people's rights versus, uh, you know, perhaps safety concerns, you know. So that's, I got a gang conference coming up on Friday. Uh, another one, I'm going into a maximum prison on the 26th where I raised a lot of hell. Um, which says a lot about DOC out here, man, because uh, it's taken them 15 years to forgive me for what I've done, but they've they've gotten to that point where they're going to let me in. Nice. You know, yeah. and uh, we take this message to them about you know transformation, uh, pursuing some uh, reconciliation, and maybe even redemption for those people interested in it. And that's in the Wisconsin Department of Corrections. Yeah, that's in Wisconsin, man. And then right after that, I'm gonna hop on a plane and go back to Portland and work with some of those kids out there, man. Yeah, we got a good group of kids out there. Absolutely. Real quick. Arnold, Arnold Michaels just left out of there. Yeah, I seen that. My ba- my boy Arnold just did a talk at this, like, it's not a juvenile detention center, but it's kind of a secondary school. And we and me, Sammy, and, and Arnold have now been, like, their main, every year we get brought in. And, but real quick, before we go to break, I want to tell you a cool story about uh, Wisconsin uh, prisons. So, uh, you know, our, we have a, fr- a mutual friend, uh, Jeff. You know Jeff? Yeah. So yep. so Jeff writes me one day because he works in the prison. Jeff is like a counselor or something, right? Counselor or guard uh, or something. Yeah, he's a, a crisis intervention and hostage negotiator. That's it. So he oh. writes me one day. He goes, look, Frank, I, I got to check this out with you. There's a guy that's in the hole in, in SEG right now, and he's saying that he, I let him read your book, and he's saying that he's in your book. And I'm like, get out of here. You know, anyone's going, you sure, you know, what do you want, royalties now? You know, I'm joking with him. And he goes, no, he says his name is Slick Rick, and he's in your book. And I was like, Slick Rick, the Latin King? He goes, yeah, yeah, that's Slick Rick. And I'm like, and I'm like, what's, what's he saying? Like, let me hear, you know, besides stories that are in the book about this guy, Slick Rick, like, what else is he saying? And he was like, no, nah, I just said that you, you, you guys were real cool and that um, he remembered doing, like, gave me a couple little small incidents. I was like, man, that, that does sound like Slick Rick. And he, uh, he went over some of his tattoos and we were talking and, and Slick Rick the whole time was saying that like, that Frank, he was like, oh, I remember that white dude, man, he was so good at sports and man, he was cool and he was cool for one of the white dudes and da 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 da. So um, Jeff sent me a picture of the guy in the email and it was Slick Rick from my book. Really? It was really him. Did you call him Slick Rick in the book? Yeah, yeah, because I never thought I'd run into the guy. And it was a nickname because normally yeah. I change people's names, but I never thought I'd run into this dude again. I thought he might be dead. And he, I mean, he was. He had a, the longest mullet for being, he was like a white Latino dude. He had the longest mullet I ever remember. Sammy, I remember hey, you saying you had a long mullet. Didn't you, <laughs> no, you didn't you say you grew your hair out real long? You didn't cut it? Sammy. Oh, me? Oh, yeah, mine was down to the back of my knees. Yeah. Yeah. What do you hey, think? Frankie, Yo. ironically, man, ironically, on my very first book reading, there was a dude from when I was 13 and he was 13 at my book reading in some random city that I did it at. Hey, you got like, the cops chasing you? Yeah, I heard that. Uh, Sammy. Um, no, that's not me. Put your hands up. Sammy, yeah, <laughs> come out with your hands up, Sammy. Give up, brother. <laughs> Give up. <laughs> hey, man. I got my kids with me, man. I got my kids. <laughs> hey, man, I love you much. I got to go to break here. Thank you so much for calling in, Sammy. I love you, hey, man. Hey, brother, we love you. Support what you're doing, man. Keep up the good work. Thanks, man. This is the Frankie Mink Show, webcastlive1.com. Did I get that right? No. Jeez. You, can you say it? No. I college. want to know what Go to guys like Sammy and Slick Rick <laughs> think about your two hundred dollar jeans. That's what I want to know. All right, get out of here, both of you. <laughs> this is the Frankie Mink Show on Webcast One Live dot com. I cheated. From the Remax Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Drug and alcohol addiction slowly steals a person's identity, tearing away pieces of their life little by little until one day it seems like the hope of a happy future is gone and there's no chance of getting it back. Here at St. Gregory Retreat Centers, we can assure you that there is hope. Our unique approach to recovery begins with the understanding that the dysfunction and damage caused by addiction can be overcome, not just dealt with. Don't let another day go by. Call St. Gregory today. Just 
just saying. I'm 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 just saying. Ching ching. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If Tom Coates from Consumer Credit of America was your personal webmaster, Tom would filter out all bad debt emails. If Tom was your mailman, you'd never get any debt reduction junk mail. If Tom Coates was a lineman, he'd block any phone calls offering to reduce your credit card debt. Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of America, and we're still your best choice for credit counseling. We're local, we're accountable, and we can do more. You make the call when the time's right for you. When it comes to competition, there really is none for Consumer Credit of America. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. like that song? Yeah, I've never heard it before. Who it's a good it? song. It's called um, Soul Survivor. No. Yeah, who's singing? I think it's called, I think they're called Soul Survivor. Mm, nice plug. Re yeah. Revival's the name of the song. It was a song that was on my TV show, the one that got canceled. It was like the opening song, or the end song. Like What's the, that, the, the Reich, that show? No, not the Reich. My other show for oh. AMC. So, uh, Back here with the Frankie Mink Show. My brother-in-law, Evan Jones, in the house tonight with me. Thank yep. you so much. Doing my news. Welcome. Just adding in. So, um, you're on, uh, we're on web webcastonelive.com. I webcast didn't even cheat. One live. I didn't even com. cheat that time. I like that. Yeah. I'm getting it. Good job. Maybe I'll get it. It'll be like Howard. Remember Howard Stern's WNBC? <laughs> WNBC. <laughs> All right, so we got we got oh we got an old friend of mine on the phone. I'll get to him in a second. That's a good old friend of mine right there, Sean Roach calling in, um, calling in from Philly. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to. Uh, was you know was you he know handing out the HBO flyers with you? No, no. But he, Sean was the man back in the day. Actually, he was in a band when I was when I was in the movement. He was in like a big band, and we were always friends. We were Philly boys, so we always kind of got along real well. And he kind of hung out with more of a different crew. But we all kind of hung out a lot together. So, you know, let's get let's get Sean on. Let's Come see if we can get Sean on here. Sean. Hey. What's up, bro? Buddy? How's it going, man? It's good, man. How you been? Good, man. Real good. Thanks for calling into my show. Yeah, man. I saw your post. I figured I'd just uh, check in with you guys. Yeah, man. I was just I was just filling my brother-in-law a little bit in on uh, me and you both used to hang out in the day. We were both uh, <laughs> part of the movement. And I said that you were kind of, you were almost legend status with the... Uh, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, we had the band, and we were, uh, you know, we had our little secret little crew that we were doing our secret stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was the name of the band? Uh, called Break the Sword. Yeah. It was a Christian Identity White Power skinhead band. And now, and now, so everyone knows, Sean has become like an ultra good guy now. Sean is, yeah, Sean's yeah, a no, real down, that, down that, dude that, now. That's the old, that's the old man. It's been a long time since yeah. I've been involved in that kind of stuff. Now you're, I've seen some of that tat work you're doing now. He's, he's oh, a tattooist, thanks, man. He's man. phenomenal. <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah, I've spent the last, like, 10 years just focusing on that, dedicated my life to that right now. Well, next time I come uh, to, next time I come into town, I'm going to get a hold of you and you can do some work on me. That'd be great, man. Yeah, I'm absolutely. Through. I'll tattoo you up, man. That'd be cool. And Dude, you're, you're yeah, I was, um, I was going to offer some people, like, you know, uh, cover-up work. Anybody that was getting out of the movement or needed to cover some old shit up, I was, I was thinking that'd be a cool way to contribute, you know what I mean? No, absolutely. You know what? Then uh, yeah. if they can't get a hold of you through now or can't find you, anyone that listens can get a hold of me on Twitter or whatever, and I'll hook you up with Sean if you're uh, in yeah. the, in that area. So uh, cool. he's, he's out in yeah, the Yeah, man, I'm definitely, anybody needs to cover up or anything like that. 
You uh, know what? It'll be, on, it'll be on me if it helps them out to get their life straight now. Uh, did you say it was break the sword? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Why, I could look us up? No, I was just wondering, what, what, yeah. what is it? Like, you got the E-Factory there? What's that venue on uh, South Street called? Uh, we had uh, Dobbs, J.C. Dobbs is on South Street, yeah. and... Uh, the Trocadero was a big was a big venue. The Electric Factory. Oh yeah, give me give me a set list, lad. Let me hear some of the names <laughs> of these songs. Give me a little bit of a set list from back then. Oh jeez, um, Victims was a, was the first song we ever wrote, which was pretty cool. Um, In the Shadows was the name of the song. I was. <laughs> I don't know if I should go into the details of the songs. <laughs> what, do you, what do you think, Frank? Yeah, no, 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 no. If people want to research, let them research it. Yeah. You know, okay. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah. If you really want to find out, I'm sure it's it's out there. It's definitely on the on the web still. Um, I, I haven't been involved in the um, production or sale of this stuff, so, I, I, but I know it's out there still. So. You know, I I don't know if it was your band. Maybe I'll tell the story. Maybe it was your band. I, I was Uh-oh. I was pretty drunk when this happened. <laughs> So one time I was at a, a Jersey show. We were somewhere in South Jersey it was with a bunch of skins, and I was helping whatever band it was. I think it might have been Warren's band, though. So, But anyway, I was helping them bring equipment in. I think I might have told right. you a story before, Evan. So uh, I was be- backstage. I'm showing off to some girl. I'm all drunk on Goldschlager. I'll never forget, drank like a whole bottle of Goldschlager. <laughs> yeah. So I, I grab a bass because it was backstage. So I grabbed this I, bass, yeah, he and I'm sitting there, and I'm just strumming this bass, <laughs> trying to show off for some girl backstage. Like, yeah, I'm part of the band, blah, 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 <laughs> right? So here, I didn't know the bass was plugged in. So the whole time uh, these guys are playing their set, they're like looking at each other, like who's messing up? Uh, and it's me backstage, uh, uh, and it was like their big show, like they couldn't wait, like right. six months, and I'm back there, mess- I messed up like two <laughs> songs. The aggravated assault. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't us. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so now I got you online. I want to bring up a, a subject that actually you you be Uh-oh. be good for you. Um, you know, the NHL has really come out with the uh, let a, let them play games, and I don't okay. know if you've seen that. And that's where the, the NHL and a lot of the major stars. And the players are coming out making these videos saying, you know, LGBT students and 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 players should have the right, right. to be able to play without being discriminated against and hearing homophobic, um, homophobic okay. slurs. What do you think of that? You think? I mean, that's a good thing, eh? Yeah, definitely, man. Um, I, NHL has always been the guys usually that play for the NHL. I think that they're they give back to the community a lot. So I, I think that's pretty pretty cool that they're they're even. Uh, you know, considering or even, you know, uh, getting involved in that. I think it's pretty decent, man. Uh, I think a lot of different people are, are starting to, you know, stand up for these people that can't stand up for themselves. You know what I mean? It's yeah. kind of cool to see that happening. And that, even people that used to, you know, to be skinheads and stuff have turned around and now they're actually, you know, looking out. You know what I mean? Standing up for people that can't stand up for themselves. So Absolutely. Cool. And yeah, you know it's definitely cool to see that. Brian Burke, who is the G, was the GM for the Ducks, who I used to work for, then he went to go to be the GM in Toronto. His mm-hmm. his and his son, I think it's his son, Sean Burke, was a f- goaltender for the Flyers. Yeah. Well, anyway, it's his brother. It's Brian Burke's son who came out as a gay athlete and was the coach for Indiana and the hockey team. And then he died. Like he came out of the closet. Like and like six months later, he died in a car accident. Right. So that's really gotta, how this. Got to be tough for those guys, don't you think? Absolutely. <laughs> to be in the locker room and. Yeah, you know. What? I mean, you, and wow. you hear a lot of slur. I'm sure you know. I'm, I'm sure when I played sports, I would use a, a, a homophobic slur back in the day. Right. Or, you know, just it's yeah. a way, real quick way to say something bad about a guy, and here not knowing maybe the guy was gay, and, and you know, it's well, you hear people say, "I don't want a gay guy in the locker room with me." I don't think they're eyeing you up, you yeah. know, in the locker room. And if they are, I don't care. I want anyone. To, I want. It, I want attention from anybody. <laughs> anybody gives me attention, I'm happy. So. Hey, Sean, thanks for calling in, my friend. Yeah, man. Hey, I just wanted to say hi, and uh, I, I like what you guys are doing. And, uh, you know, man, when you get to Philly, we definitely got to hang out. Absolutely. Right, Maybe we'll catch Take a Flyers care. game, brother. See you, man. Uh, yeah, that'd be awesome. Take care, guys. Bye. Peace. Um, there's some other big news you better remember. What's that? Your mother-in-law has a birthday tomorrow. Oh, I knew that. Yeah. And your yeah. twin brother. And my twin brother. And her twin brother. Oh, and her twin brother. Yeah, Uncle yeah, KK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let's say happy birthday now so we can get it right out of the way. Yeah, okay. Happy so, birthday, Mom. Happy birthday, Claudette. Yeah, we yeah. love you. Yeah, Dick man. Jones, don't forget. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's picking up the phone right now, ordering something. Yeah, he is right now. He's <laughs> he's, at, he's listening to this, and he just opened up another window, and he's looking for like 1-800-GOT-ROSES <laughs> right now. You know, it's funny. I was just talking about your mom and dad. Um, I did this speech for, um, it's like, uh, it's not the FBI, but it's like the uh, Citizens FBI Academy. So it's no FBI people. It's just 
this academy of people who want to help the FBI and, you know, be active citizens. Right? Neighborhood I, watch. Kind of like that. And so I did this talk and someone was saying, well, how close are you with your mom and dad now? And I said, you know, I'm kind of cool with my mom and dad. I mean, I get, you know, I don't get calls from, from my mom and dad. I just don't. Like, they don't call on Christmas or Easter. It's just not their style. It's just what it is what it is. Yeah. And I was like, you know, I'm actually more closer to my, my mother-in-law, my my you know my father-in-law said i'm more closer to them than i am to anybody else i mean they i probably talked to them a hundred times more than i talked to my real parents so i was just talking nice about them just the other day really yeah and if they're listening i'm really getting some kiss-up points right this second nice yeah <laughs> <laughs> now happy birthday claudette so what's up what's the other story oh i know what we want to talk about what right. we want to talk about uh, North Korea. A North bit. Korea. Yeah. Well, we kind of did talk about that with the Austin thing. Yeah, but not. Re- I mean, what do you think? I mean, do you think we're gonna go to war with them? I don't know. Is this guy calling the shots, or is he just a puppet? For- <laughs> Look at that guy. Yeah. What is he like twenty nine, thirty years old? <laughs> I don't know. He's funny looking though. Like, do you really think he has to say? Like, can he pick up a phone and say, "Let's do it"? I bet you he could. I don't know. I'm, I think he has no one. I think he's a supreme leader. Somebody says, again, this is barbershop talk, but like when he got uh, inaugurated or whatever, there's like a group of people standing there, generals, higher ups, like half of those people are now missing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right. So they didn't get on board or. You you ever, there's a really cool picture on, um, it's like a Google picture or Google Maps, and it is um, the, at night, on that side of the earth at night. And you see China's all lit up, Japan's all lit up, South Korea's all lit up, and you could see the outline of North Korea because it's dark. Yeah. Like, I think if we did do something, I'd want to eliminate just their government. Maybe this is just silly uh, American thinking, but I would think the the poor peasants in that country would be like, thank you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, from what I understand, and, and I wonder how brainwashed they really are, but... They're told that, like, someone was saying, I would just watch a, like a 60-minute thing on this, and it was saying that their, the Supreme Leader said that he invented the chair. Like, he yeah. invented all this stuff. So Remember they, they said he shot around a golf, it, oh, and it was like he, he hit like a 50, you know, like 20 under par or something. No, he hit, I think he hit like 18 hole in one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, something yeah. like uh, totally obnoxious. And, right. And, there, and everyone believed it, and I think he, like, later said he invented the game of golf. And, they, I mean, so... In their newspaper, just like everything is, the Supreme Leader did this, and maybe they are brainwashed pretty bad. Man, I don't like. How do they? Wonder how they like, get food. Like, how do they? Like, what kind of industries do they have over there? I know we get stuff from Korea, but I think we mostly get stuff from South Korea. Like, how do they make money? Like, do the people in the villages all go somewhere and get like their rice rations? You know what I mean? Yeah, and it gets passed out like. Because I, I seen a thing, too, of a guy walking down the street in North Korea, and it was, like, the downtownish area, and he was, like, the only one, and there was, like, the, the dust bowls or, or whatever those things. And there's nothing but pictures of this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. Look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, we laugh, but, you know. Ah, uh, he looks, it's great. Imagine if he starts the next world war. No, there's not going to be on his side. I think, no, China would be on his side. No. No. No, they're smarter than that. I think because they got so much trade going on with us. I mean, if they shot a nuclear missile, I think it's going to crash right in the ocean. I don't think they really. I mean, who knows? But they sunk a battleship or something like a couple years ago, killed a bunch of South Koreans. Yeah. And then South Korea changed their rules for engagement uh, because of that. So I think South Korea's had enough. But these North Koreans, they got like what, one of the largest armies, 1.2 million or something like that. Yeah. But how well nourished are they? Do you see the march? How do they do that? I don't know. Kicking those legs up? Yeah, like the old Nazis. Yeah, but they keep, like I could understand maybe doing four of those kicks, but they just keep going. Boom, yeah. boom, boom, boom. And they're probably starving. That's all I think about. I just think that they're probably so hungry. Like they, if we got into a real war with them, I don't think they'd be able to like feed the front lines and all that good stuff. I think they would, they have no way of rationing food all the way like i think we would i think we would beat them i think it'd be really bloody and nasty and um i hope there wouldn't be like a land invasion i hope they'd just drop a bunch of bunker busters on the government i don't know man so anyway that's yeah. north korea what's the other thing i want to talk to you about today i was thinking about hmm. Mm-hmm-hmm. 
We talked about gay marriage. We talked about uh, um, let them play. Is that what it's called, the boat? Yeah, let them let play. Em play. Let them. I thought that's what it was called. Let them play. Um, you know, I I quit smoking. To, Did I tell you that? You've told me that about twenty times since I've known you. <laughs> and it's the same. <laughs> Actually, I smoked one yesterday in Houston. Yeah. I'm, I'm having the patch on, and it's horrible. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. So I'm on these patches, right? And you can't really smoke because if you try to smoke, it tastes really bad, and it, like your your body's over nicotine. But they give me like the craziest, wildest, most vivid dreams I've ever had. Right. I love them. It's like a new adventure every I'm, night. It is. I love. Yeah. And then I always figure out it's a dream. So then I go buck wild because I know it's a dream. I know I'm not. Sometimes I can do that. Sometimes I can't. I did the whole the other day in my dream. I went to go pinch myself, and I was like, "I don't feel it. It's a dream." I was yeah. so, and I was like, "Whoa, let's have fun!" Yeah, yeah, that's cool. And I met uh, today. I met one of the cousins of the Three Stooges. Yeah, you said that. Yeah, it was super cool. What do you mean? Eh. Well, there's actually. I mean, which cousin? Are we talking about first cousin? No, second, there four she was of second them? cousin. Her mom was their direct cousin. There, and there's yeah. there were three, all of them, Curly wasn't the one that wasn't really, it was Shemp. Yeah. We're actually talking about this? <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. So anyway, so man, thanks for coming in for my show. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got to go get that garage door working. Yeah. I, you know, I know she didn't put the trim up and the tile work, that base, that shoe molding. Yeah, at my house? Yeah. No, you moved yet. the stuff back in the room. Though. I didn't put it back in there because I was going to wait until we paint it. But it's your, your sister. The stuff that Your makes sister. me think it's not going to get done. No, it'll get done. Yeah. It'll get done when you come over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we said happy birthday to mom and Uncle KK. Yep. All right. Good. Say, say hi to Dick Jones. I think he's listening tonight. That's Dick my Jones, father in law. Yeah. Yeah. D now it's starting to sound like cable access, though. 717. We're giving, we're giving shout outs to people. A little bit of 68, all 69, 10 days of 70. Yeah, your father in, the, yeah. in Vietnam, yeah. he killed a tree over there. Did you ever tell you the story? <laughs> yeah, he, he told shot me that. a tree with a 50 millimeter, I think it was. It's his big claim to fame. <laughs> I like he'd wake up at uh, at camp, maybe it was boot camp or whatever. Yeah, we're talking about my father in law, just if everyone gets into Terrible this. snore. He'd wake up, everybody's boots would be laying by his bed because they <laughs> kept throwing them at him, getting him to stop snoring. Has his battle wounds. <laughs> <laughs> he got a purple heart for that. <laughs> Uh, we're going to get out of here. Everyone enjoy your Friday night. Be safe. Be nice to everyone. Um, what a, what a great show. I, even though without a guest, uh, thank you, Evan. You really did a great job. Well, thanks for having me on. Absolutely. I'll fun. try to maybe have you, maybe we'll make it the brother-in-law show next, but you yeah. got to keep, can you still be part of a show that's the Frankie Mink show? Yeah. I mean, I thought this was a one-time deal. I will see. You no, did, I'm, I'm fine with it being a one-time deal. <laughs> <laughs> Chris DeBolt, you're the man. Yeah. That's right, the best producer in town right there. Don't overdo it with the Biggie. I'm not overdoing it. Do you think I overdo it with the Biggie, the ball? You're Biggie heavy. No, no, no. I do it. I did it twice Moderation. now in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Twice in two weeks. Yeah. And that's, I mean, it's Biggie. I mean, the greatest hip-hop rappers of, our, of all time. Yeah. So. Top five. Top. And with that, <laughs> thank you again. This is the Frankie Mink Show, webcast1live.com. I'm Brian Leach, owner and general manager of Service Legends. Oh, I brought uh, along a couple of the uh, home comfort heroes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Tammy Wells. I am Nick Wondershot. I'm administrative manager. I'm the senior technician. I'm Service Legends. It seems like every good thing, when you feel it to the bone that it's good, there's a lot of hard work put behind it. You just, I, I don't think that you can fake it and have it turn out good. You know, if we seem like, okay, that's just weird, it's just a furnace, why would you believe so deeply in a furnace? It's not just that, you know, we want to show the world that you can have good service. Yeah, I mean, it's gotta be, it's your home. You know, it's, it's built into our daily trainings, it's built into our culture, um, that we're gonna do whatever it takes to have each client say they love us, period. That's why we spend all the hours in the training that we do, and if we guarantee it's gonna be a good experience for you, or else it's free, what type of work do you think we're gonna do? <laughs> there is a guarantee. Temperature selection guarantee, fixed rider it's free guarantee, comfort guarantee, best value guarantee, all of these guarantees hold us accountable to ensuring that we exceed your expectations. And if for whatever reason we'd fail and we can't make it right, we guarantee all of those guarantees with a 100% money back guarantee. I mean, if you don't think that your technician can fix it right, are you going to say that to a client? No. <laughs>
You don't have to worry about having a technician come to your house. We drug test, background check all of our team members. We put safe people in your home. Each and every one of our service techs, 400 hours a year in training. You tell it the minute they walk in the door. They know what they're doing, they've done their homework, and they actually truly care about what you want. Because at the end of the day, you're the person that makes sure I have a job. They're going to be listening. They're going to want to know what your challenges are. Then they're going to come and give you options, and, and you get to choose. If I'm there to help and I make it easy and painless, I did my job right that day. Well, when it comes to your comfort, safety, and your family, you know, you don't necessarily go buy the most expensive, but you get the most bang for your buck. Oh, it's worth it, because there's a lot of people that will find a way to get it to work right now, and then leave and then come back, charge you again, and, and the cycle just repeats itself. So when I'm out there looking at the furnace, I want to find why it failed today. How can we change the part today with something that you're not going to have to worry about? Is it worth changing the part today? I mean, you can put a lot of money into a furnace. I can fix parts all day. There's good job security in that for me. But is it the right thing for you? I get a lot of the phone calls of after the technicians are there. They're just in awe. They're like, wow, you guys are great. I mean, I don't even know what to say. You guys are great. Everything you did is perfect. It's great. <laughs> Keep going though. I like this. <laughs> Just give us a try. I'm going to take all the risk. I've got the time to make this right. I've got the support to make it right. Just check us out. And if you don't see the value in what we do, I mean, fixed writer, it's free or 100% money back. Enough said. <laughs>